Jeff told us you're on the injury report with a hamstring. What um, that happened during the game Sunday, or that's something to be dealing with? I think based on the rules, you have to maybe put down anything you're getting treatment for. So, yeah, I got treatment yesterday for my, uh, you know, little hamstring tightness and in, uh, in my knee. So, did that affect you at all in the game? Uh, not really. No. Aaron, what you're, what you're kind of dealing with now? I mean, I think you had talked to us previously about your knees, the hamstring, the ankle. I mean, that's a lot of your lower base. Is it impacting how you're throwing in terms of if you can plan, if you can drive, things of that nature? No, I don't think so. I mean, I feel good on game days. Um, the ankle uh, responded really well. Um, you know, I just have some uh, some swelling in my knee from time to time, um, but I don't think it's going to be an issue. How do you feel about Hassan Redick in the building? Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, excited to see him in here. Uh, it's been, you know, uh, probably a process for him. So we're just going to put our arms around him and and embrace him uh, and hope that uh, you know he can help us out this Sunday. Aaron, I'm, I'm sure football has always come naturally to you, easily to you. Has this year? Been... No, not really. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't say that. No. Well, has this year been harder than you than you thought it would be, just in physically and getting the team all together and going in the right direction? Well, I mean, every year presents its own challenges, and uh, thankfully, we're not to the denouement of this season. You know, there's still a lot of time left. Um, I think it's important that we all just stay as sanguine as possible. You know, this, it's a long season. There's a lot of ups and downs. We've had a lot of adversity already this season. Um, we just got to stick together and get one and then start to build off of that. New vocabulary words today. Um, did you, yesterday you mentioned, like, the team being, like, have to play less angry and, and less tight. I said, yeah, me, really. I, I was taking the angry part on me, yeah. You have to play less angry? I have to, we all have to to play more loose, I think, for sure. Um, you know, maybe I didn't, uh, you know, use the proper eloquence when, when, when I was on there. But what I was trying to say was I think that when you're out there, we need to uh, get rid of any anger or frustration and be able to move on. Uh, and remember how much we love the game and play with uh, the, f- the uh, excitement and the joy. Um, I think that was, was it, whatever was going on on game day, we all you know, didn't maybe have the same type of uh, uh, spirit you know, that we usually do. Um, and I just took it on me. I got to lead with that type of joy and energy uh, each week so that it gives it permi- permission to, for everybody to enjoy themselves a little bit more. Um, I'm very critical and hard on myself and want to uh, want to play as well as possible, want to play better. But, um, you know, we need to play looser. So, uh, you know, we're still figuring uh, figuring things out um, in a lot of ways. But energetically, we got to find that balance of accountability with uh, the forgiveness to be able to make mistakes and guys not playing out of fear, but playing for the love of the game. How do you go, how do you go about getting everybody to get to that stage? Like well, I mean, it's tough. I mean, it's, it has to be each individual first, you know, being, uh, being critical themselves, but then being able to move on. I think we all got to move on better from, from bad plays. We, sometimes there's too much stuck energy in one thing that happens. Uh, I get frustrated about interception for sure. I got to model maybe a little bit better, like moving on um, uh, and just moving on to the next play. Um, so I'm, you know, looking at myself first, I think, but we all can uh, do a better job of, of being able to compartmentalize each individual play, whether it's a great play or a frustrating play, and just move on to the next one. After the game, you had talked about culture changes and changing the culture. I imagine that takes time, changing mm-hmm. the culture of an entire building. Mm-hmm. You guys don't necessarily have time. No, so we don't. how challenging is that to be trying to do something that takes years and you're trying to do it in days and weeks and months? I don't know if it does take years. I mean, I think one player sometimes can can make a change. I think there's there's times where um, one thing can click. You know, it's like the uh, the uh, the story of cutting down a tree, and, and it's the final blow that actually fells the tree. But uh, you might not see the first thousand hacks at it. Sometimes it just takes that one thing to happen. It could be a, uh, a speech, you know, before a game, after a game, something during the week that just clicks and the energy of that click can be contagious and I think what you do is you try and set up a lot of different things um, that are part of the structure and the foundation of a winning culture but 
until each of those things clicks in, um, you're, you're fighting against some of the ghosts of uh, years past. And it's in every organization. It's in every season. You have to find that that part. But there's just certain cultures that innately have that in it where it's maybe a little bit easier to access that, but you still have to access it every single year. It doesn't just, oh, you wake up and I'm on the Green Bay Packers and there's, you have this amazing culture. No, you have to you have to put in those things in place, those spikes, you know, in the foundation and then just anchor those in. So I think there's a lot of things in place. It just needs to completely anchor in. And I think there's some things that happened uh, after the game that um, were big... Uh, you know, big helpers as far as some of the culture stuff. Uh, I can't go into that. Jeff, yeah. Jeff said Devontae. Guys back, Devontae spoke. Oh, we already talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's not any esoteric uh, yeah. uh, conversations, but no, I mean, it was, yeah, it was, it was, I won't say exactly what I said because uh, there's some cameras rolling and colorful metaphors involved in how I really felt about the speech, but uh, to paraphrase without using um, uh, any French, I thought it was the realest speech I'd ever heard in a locker room in 20 years. Is that surprising? You know very Not well, surprising right? but, at all. But he's only been there for five days. That's what I'm saying. Well, you right mentioned right? that. I mean, yeah. he led with that. He, <laughs> yeah. led, he led with that, which I think was important. But there's just certain guys over the years that are – I don't even know what adjective uh, to use is better than this one, but they're just real guys. And when they speak up, you feel it. And I was kind of looking at him when Brick was talking. And Brick was saying some great stuff, too. And he's been fantastic. But I just could feel like, oh, Tay's about to say something, you know. And then he started talking. And everybody that was in that locker room felt it. So I drove home with him after the game uh, and just told him how proud I am of what he, what he said in that moment. Yeah, do, do anything like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he did that over the years in Green Bay, but, you know, a lot of times it'd be me talking after a game or Mercedes or Aaron Jones or Charles Woodson or some of those guys. But And he kind of learned, you know, his his way over the years. But that was, yeah, that was some real, real you know what. How would you assess the locker room just in terms of cohesiveness being on the same page after that? Oh, I don't know. I mean, again, you know, it, it's 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 a collective that's made up of individuals. So the individuals make up the collective in a sense that they all have to, on their own, come to the same mindset to uh, to hold themselves accountable each week uh, because of their role in the collective. And I think that's the beauty in the sport is that it takes so many different guys to be on the same page. Um, so we'll see as the week goes on. But you know, this it, is it's it's, uh, it's time to uh, to make all the conversations that were said and all the tiny little changes that Jeff has made um, come to fruition this week and, and start moving in the right direction. In terms of finding that looseness that you talked about specifically, I mean, you've been on some teams that, that made late runs before. How do you do that when you know also in the back of your mind that the margin for error is, is so slim with your record what it is? Well, I think you got to take yourself, like I said yesterday, to the worst case scenario and sit with whatever that is in your mind and, and come to... Uh, uh, a good place where uh, that's not scary anymore. Then take yourself to the opposite end. What's the highest path for this team? And then in the middle is where you're where you're at right now. And then think about what's it going to take to get to that highest path. And then also what are the things uh, that are happening right now that are taking you down the path you don't want to go down. And that's what I did for the last 48 hours was just really think a lot about my role, what I can do better and uh, how I can be a part of uh, the change needed to get this thing going in the right direction.